Hello and welcome to Online Worship with the Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church on this fourth Sunday in the Advent season. I am Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who is leading worship, we are so glad that you have chosen to worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church today. Thank you for that. We want to uh, say a special welcome to anyone who's worshiping with us for the first time, and I want to encourage you to use our contact form. There is a link for that in the comments and a special QR code on your screen right now. We'd love for you to use that, everybody to use that today, so that we can be in contact with you, that we can get to know you a little bit better, that we can get you our e-newsletter that has all of the information about ways to connect and grow in faith and serve and love through Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And please note that also on that contact form, there is a place there for you to put your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and our prayer team. So that we, ho we hope that you will just use that contact form today. Now, when we join together for online worship, we do covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. And that means when we covenant to participate that we're going to participate in what it is that we're doing in worship today. This isn't just some random video that you're watching. This is worship of God and worship with one another. So we encourage you to uh, pray when it's time to pray, to stand up and sing when it's time to sing, to really listen and pay attention to all the things that we're doing so that we can all be fully participating today. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And that means that the way that we're in the comments section, the way we may be gathered with people right now as we're worshiping, the way we're sending this out into the world, that all of it is going to be a blessing to everyone that is involved. So thank you for joining with us in our covenant to participate and to bless. Now this is the fourth Sunday in the season of Advent, which is a time when Christians deepen their spiritual practices such as prayer and silence and giving and fasting in preparation for the second coming of Jesus Christ, as well as the celebrations of Christmas. Now, each week we have been lighting a candle on our Advent wreath to help us pray and to remember. And you are welcome to join with us in this practice using your own Advent wreath candle or any candle that you might have. I invite you to get those things ready along with a lighter so that you can join in this special time in just a few moments. And please note that we also have some wonderful special music that we're enjoying together today. So we're particularly glad that you are here. Welcome to worship.
for the DAUMC YouTube. I'm Janet Schmidt and I'm the organist here at Deco Savage. And I'm Mark Schmidt and I'm normally on the other side of the camera. We invite you to have your Advent wreath ready or have any candle with you and a lighter so that you may join us in lighting the candle of love for Advent. As our nights grow longer and our days grow short, we look on these earthly signs in our wreath, the light of the candles and the green of the evergreen boughs to help us remember God's promise to our world. The first week, we lit the candle of hope as we hold in hope the promise of the coming Messiah. The second week, we lit the candle of peace as we await our Prince of Peace to return to this world and make all things right. Last week, we lit the candle of joy, opening ourselves to the spring of joy that God had already planted in each one of us. This week, we light the candle of love. John chapter 3, verse 16 tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that we might have eternal life. God's promise was fulfilled on Christmas Eve in the birth of a babe in Bethlehem, a baby who would become known as Emmanuel, God with us. God's love for us, for us is never ending. Although we know of love, we learn from God, for God is love and all of us God. And so, to remember this mighty act through Jesus Christ, we light the candle of love. Let us pray. Lord God, we are amazed that you love us so much that you show up in person. We rejoice in your steadfast love for all the people of the world, fulfilled in the birth of your Son, Jesus. Help us to live and act on that same love each and every day. Every, amen. Please join us in singing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you, and respond, and also with you. Please do this with one another as you're gathered together in the comments, and also with these folks from our Douglas Avenue community. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. My name is Sandra. I'm fairly new at this church. Peace be with you. Hi, my name is Mr. Mike. I'm the site director here at Compass for Kids, and peace be with you. Hi, my name is Barbara Bruce. I ring with the Wesley handbells. Peace be with you. It is time for small talk, so I want to encourage any of the children who are joining in our online worship to come in really close to your device and your screen so that you can see and hear everything that's going on with small talk. This time is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and her fabulous assistant, Laud the Lamb. So let's get ready right now for Small Talk. Good morning, everybody. It is Miss Laurie, 
and Laud the Lamb and his helper Cohen. And we are so excited. It is the Sunday before Christmas, right Laud? We're very excited. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the nativity scene. Mm-hmm. Houses have, have them usually at Christmas time. This is one back here that my mom gave me several years ago that goes up every year at Christmas time. They come in all different types and styles. This one is really pretty. And this one is also, it's a music box. Plays Silent Night. But then they also come in things a little more appropriate for kids. This is another one of my favorites. This is, I know which one you're going for. This is Snoopy and the Peanuts Gang. I know the sheep. Mm -hmm. Most nativity scenes have sheep and Laud really likes that. Snoopy here, he's he's dressed as a, as a, as a sheep. Mm -hmm. And there were shepherds keeping watch over the flock. Part of the flock but we did come across one and this one is definitely different what you got there it is a rubber ducky nativity set thank you here's mary whoa whoa we're, we're kind of we're we're Okay, so we got Mary and Joseph here in rubber ducky form. We got some of the wise men, baby Jesus, angel ducky, mm -hmm. more wise men ducky, shepherd ducky, cow ducky. There's more. No, uh, this is uh who do we have here? We've got we've got I think this is camel ducky and donkey ducky. <laughs> donkey duck, yeah, donkey ducky. Very creative. But they all have one thing in common. The baby Jesus. Mm -hmm. Baby Jesus and Joseph and Mary. Sometimes you find them with wise men. Sometimes you find them with shepherds. Sometimes you find them with lots of animals. But they all have Jesus, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Whether they are in peanuts form or all grown up form. Oops, sorry, they're wise man. They all have these. For unto you is born a Savior, and that's Jesus. Thanks, guys. Have a wonderful week. Bye. Really going. <laughs> Seriously. Please join us in singing Prepare the Way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord, and all people will see the salvation of our God. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way of the Lord, and all people will see the salvation of our God. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way of the Lord, and all people will see the salvation of our God. Karis Brown and I am Joy Brown. Our reading from the Bible is the Gospel of Luke chapter 1 verses 26 through 38 and verses 46 through 55. Let us open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through our reading. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, 
the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. And Mary sang out, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible readings we have received today. Amen. I love our scripture passages that we have for today, and I think it's so fitting to explore the song of Mary, the Magnificat, particularly while we are enjoying so much of our favorite music during this season. The song of Mary is both entirely familiar to many as the traditional prayer of the Magnificat, and completely and amazingly unfamiliar in its wildly revolutionary proclamation of Jesus' mission of love. In preparation to reread the Song of Mary this season, I encountered some wonderful writing from Reverend Ruth Ann Garcia of Epiphany Episcopal Church in Seattle. She gathered together several instances of how we can underestimate the power of Mary's words, of Mary's revolutionary song. One is a 2018 article by D.L. Mayfield in the Washington Post. Mayfield writes how American Protestant Christians have often devalued the role of Mary and her song to the point that she has almost been forgotten as anything other than a silent figure in a nativity scene. Mayfield asked evangelical Christians on Twitter about Mary's song, the Magnificat, and of the more than 1,100 people who responded, 28% said they had never heard the title Magnificat which is the Latin for magnify. 43% said their churches never read or discussed it. 21% said they had encountered it just a few times. And 8% said they read it every year. Mayfield goes on to say that almost all of the popular evangelical songs that incorporate the Magnificat stop after the first couple of verses. Reverend Garcia concludes from this research, So it would seem that the powers that be are comfortable hearing about how Mary's soul magnifies the Lord and her spirit rejoices in God her Savior, as long as she is very quiet, docile, and agreeable about it. But the bits about how God shows the strength of God's arm and scatters the proud in their conceit, the vision of God casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly, these bits are not acceptable to those who seek to coerce, control, and disempower. Garcia continues by pointing out that 
in the not too distant past, the Magnificat has been prohibited by three different governments. One, during the British rule of India, for example, the Magnificat was prohibited from being sung in church. And in the 1980s, Guatemala's government discovered that Mary's words about God's preferential love for the poor was inspiring the poor in their country. So, believing that it was too dangerous and too revolutionary, they banned any public recitation of Mary's words. Similarly, Mary's song was outlawed in Argentina after a group of mothers referred to as the mothers of the disappeared, whose children disappeared during the military dictatorship, placed the words of the Magnificat on posters in protest throughout the Capitol Plaza. So Mary's song was again outlawed. Garcia continues, the reason that these governments and those who seek to control others fear Mary's words is because echoing the words of Hannah and all the women prophets of the Old Testament, her song, if we really listen, can inspire all of us to believe that change is possible and remind us that God doesn't just care about us in some spiritual way, far removed from our real day-to-day -day existence. The Song of Mary is a song of reversals, a song of a God that loves the world to so, so much as to show up in person, a song about a king arriving in poverty, a song about God's Messiah being born as a baby, a song about expectations being interrupted, a song about the world being turned upside down. Mary's revolutionary song of God's upending love lives within her own experience of having her world turned upside down. Mary is visited by the angel Gabriel and she is told that her child will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High and the Lord God will give him the throne of the ancestor David. Mary accepts this declaration wholeheartedly has some conversation with the angel Gabriel about how and the powerful work of the Holy Spirit, and then gives her consent to be Jesus' mother. Mary says, here am I, God's servant. Yes, yes. In that exchange, we discover that Mary aligns her priorities with God's priorities for her life and for the world. She declares her consent and love for God's vision being conceived in Jesus. And Mary cements this love that turns the world upside down in her own response, her song of praise, the Magnificat. Like other women's songs from the Bible, Mary's song tells the core mission of Jesus and provides a prophetic and interpretive lens through which we can see Jesus' life and work. The center of Mary's song can be found beginning in verse 51. The Lord has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. God has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Mary sings out, about what God's love looks like. It is a turning upside down of the world's priorities to be God's priorities. The powerful are brought down and the lowly are brought up. The hungry are fed while the rich are sent away. Those open to and faithful to God's love and purposes are given mercy and strength, while those who follow their own pride, who say they live by their own power or riches or prowess, they are scattered in the thoughts of their hearts. This reversal of values is pretty obvious even in our secular celebration of the holiday season. Thanksgiving through Christmas usually sees the largest influx of food and volunteers into feeding ministries and soup kitchens. People are nicer to each other as they try to live up to the Christmas spirit. December is even the biggest month for charitable giving. In terms of the normal values of our world, it really makes no sense to give your money away. And yet Christmas brings out that impulse in many people, whether they are faithful people or not. At Christmas, people 
often don't act like their normal selves, but instead turn their regular values upside down. But more than this passing holiday cheer, the deep and real love of God changes everything. God's love for us and our love for God changes things. I think it can be easy at Christmas to get sucked into those kind of regular values of our world. The consumeristic, chaotic, shallow grab for more and more that has somehow become our patriotic duty in order to save our country's economic system and support our global economy, particularly in the midst of a global pandemic and what feels like an uncertain future. But the real power of Jesus' birth is the way God turns these values on their head. Mary knew this and expressed her alignment with God's priorities in song and with her life, powerfully and unashamed. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses who know these values of God. And, and you, you know these values too. I pray that this Christmas we will all fall more deeply in love with the God of Mary. And that this love will turn your world and my world and our world upside down too. Amen. Cindy Arnold, and I am a member here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm also a member of the Young Adult Sunday School and the Community Garden team here, and between Sundays, I also teach high school math. Will you join me with the prayers of the people today? Hey God, 
They tell us that this Sunday is the last Sunday in Advent, when we celebrate love. We don't always know how to talk about love in our culture and our language, and sometimes we use other languages to describe it better, like agape for un unconditional love. Help us understand these different kinds of love. I know I love my students differently than I love my nephew, and yet they're both still love. And that's all different from my love of pizza, for instance, or the beauty that you make each day with the sunrise and sunset. Jesus explained that to follow him, we need to love you and love our neighbors as the way we love ourselves. So Lord, help us to love you when we enjoy that sunset and help us to love each other even if we disagree and help us to love ourselves even when the world says we are not enough. Help us to put your love at the center of all we do and let it change us and change the world. Thank you, Lord, for love, for being love, and for loving us. And Lord, let your love bring healing and change for all of those who are sick, struggling, lonely, or addicted. Let your radical love pour out into our world to bring comfort, peace, justice, and change. And give us courage and clarity to step into this action plan with you. And Lord, now please make your love known to us in a clear way as we pray the Lord's Prayer, as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
there certainly is a song in the air this morning at DAUMC. Aren't you glad you came to church? We're in the midst of one of the busiest periods of the church year, with plenty of opportunities to put your faith into action. Here's what you need to know in the days to come. We know that the holidays are not always the most joyous time of the year for those facing grief or loss. We invite you to join us on Tuesday, December 21st at 7 p.m. for the Longest Night Worship Service, a service of remembrance, consolation, and assurance. This service will be offered both in the sanctuary at DAUMC as well as online via Facebook. And then on Friday, December 24th, you're invited to join us for Christmas Eve at Douglas Avenue. There will be a 4 p.m. family-friendly worship service in the sanctuary, an online worship service at 6 p.m., and an 8 p.m. service of lessons and carols, also in the sanctuary. If you're coming to the 8 p.m. worship service, join us a half hour early for beautiful music of the season provided by DAUMC musicians. Please note that on Sunday, December 26th and Sunday, January 2nd, there will be only one in-person worship service in the sanctuary, and that will begin at 10.30 a.m. Please join us in person for this combined worship service. We will be having online worship as usual at 10.30 a.m. via Facebook and YouTube. Thank you to all those who provided the beautiful poinsettia plants that are gracing our sanctuary. Your donation in honor or in memory of a loved one is greatly appreciated. In your mail this week, you should have received a copy of the church's courier print newsletter. You'll recognize it because it's on green paper. In the newsletter, you'll find everything you need to know about this year's Christmas mission offering, which is being divided between Helping Hands of Springfield and Chaddock. There's even a handy envelope for submitting your Christmas offering. Both of these charities are well known to DAUMC, and we hope you'll want to give generously. We hope you'll also consider an end-of-year, fully tax-deductible donation to the Raise the Roof campaign. This fund was created by the Finance Committee to help pay down the cost of roofing repairs and air conditioning repairs, which have been undertaken over the last two years. Help keep our campus ready for all all of the programs being undertaken at DAUMC. It looks like the cold weather is finally here, but we don't want this to be a cold winter for our friends and students at Du Bois Elementary School. You can donate hats and gloves and mittens and scarves at the tree in the welcoming area outside the DAUMC narthex. Have you purchased your 2022 calendar yet? They feature the artwork of our own Gwen Lewis, and they make wonderful stocking stuffers for Christmas. Prints of the artwork are also available. You can see them at the display outside the sanctuary near the elevator. All of the profits from this project are going to be used by United Methodist Women for mission projects. Thank you for your dedicated support for the programs and ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We always try to make it easy to give, with many giving options provided to you. If you ever have a question about giving, please don't hesitate to call the church office. We'll be happy to work with you. As I said, it's one of the busiest times of the year. Thank you for all you do to support all of these ministries and activities. But now it's time for another song in the air. Let's return to worship. Please join us in singing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I just hope that your experience has been uplifting and powerful and meaningful. Um, we want to encourage you, of course, to use that contact form. Remember, the link for that is in the comment section and we have a QR code for that. And this is the best way that we'll be able to connect with you in your life of faith. To get you our e-newsletter, make sure you put your email address there. That has all of the opportunities to connect and be in service and worship and giving and all of those things with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And remember, there's also a place there for prayer requests that go to our pastors and to our prayer team. And then I want you to encourage you to continue to join with us in worship, particularly during the Christmas week. We will have our longest night worship service on December 21st at 7 p.m. That will be online here on Facebook and also in our sanctuary at DAUMC. And this is a special, more quiet service that recognizes that not all of us are feeling merry and bright during Christmas. And we especially encourage you to join with us during that time. And then on Christmas Eve, on Friday, December 24th, we will have a family Christmas Eve worship at 4 p.m in the sanctuary at Douglas Avenue. Uh, we will have our online Christmas Eve worship at 6 p.m. via Facebook and YouTube. And then our service of lessons and carols at 8 p.m. in the sanctuary with special Christmas music beginning at 7.30 p.m. We hope that you will also just continue to join with us for online worship during this season. Uh, we continue to have those every Sunday, so join with us for that special time. And now as you go into your day, Go knowing that God loves you in completely, that the God of Mary is calling you to embrace that love, to let it turn your world and our world upside down. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen. Mm -hmm.